Without further ado, we will, are so pleased to introduce uh, our first winner and presenter of the evening, our 2014 National Collegiate Prize winner for the undergraduate use it category, NVBOTS. And on behalf of NVBOTS, we have Mateo Peña Dal. Mateo? <laughs> Mateo. Thank you. Hi. My name is Mateo, and I'm here to tell you how NVBOTS has made 3D printing easy. So my co-founders are AJ Perez, Forrest Piper, and Chris Haight. AJ, Chris, and I are mechanical engineers. Forrest is a computer scientist and electrical engineer. We all studied at MIT as undergrads, and AJ is currently pursuing a master's in manufacturing right now. <clears throat> so from a young age, we all gained experience doing engineering. AJ loves to build. Forrest and Chris Hay did first robotics. And I was, I've always had a fascination for cars, motorcycles, and machines. At MIT, about a year ago, we joined up and started working on fun engineering projects. So that included building quadcopters, making glove lights, designing skateboards, and a sort. And we kept running into the same problem, which was that we didn't have a way to prototype our designs. Quickly and rapidly prototype them so we could iterate and design something that was useful. So when I say quick and rapid prototyping, the first thing that comes to mind is 3D printing. Um, I'm sure you have all heard of 3D printing. And I know many of you in Venn teams have actually gained a lot of experience using 3D printers. Now, but in, in short, a 3D printer is a versatile manufacturing piece of equipment that allows you to create a model that you can design on a, on a computer very quickly and easily. It requires very little setup, so practically anybody can 3D print. <clears throat> so we decided to build our own 3D printer so that we could have access to this technology. MIT has a lot of 3D printers, but most of them are only for classroom use. And the few that are available to students are very backed up with a lot of jobs. So through the process of building our 3D printer, we gain firsthand ex experience of what the problems are and the difficulties with 3D printing. And we felt confident that together, we could solve these problems and make a better 3D printer. Now, this is an important point, um, because the problems that are closest to home that you have personal experience with, or that your family members and friends have personal experiences with, are the problems that you will be the most motivated to solve. And with motivation and the right team backing you, you can accomplish anything you set your mind to. So the first problem with 3D printing is that today's workforce is not trained for 3D printing. Traditional manufacturing or conventional manufacturing is synonymous with subtractive manufacturing. And this is the process of taking a block of material, subtracting the material you do not want to leave something that you do want. And the optimization problem for this is minimizing the amount of material you remove in order to save on material costs and time. 3D printing is exactly the opposite. You want to minimize the amount of material you add to save on uh, material costs and time. So the solution to this is obvious. We need to provide middle schoolers, high schoolers, and even elementary students access to 3D printing so that they can take the technology, this new technology, to its full potential. So just like you invent teams here, uh, we want to provide you with manufacturing so that you can take it to the next level. And also, more importantly, by providing you with access to 3D printing, you can practice inventiveness and creation from a young age, unbound by the constraints of traditional manufacturing and textbook learning. I mean, doesn't that sound great? No textbooks? <laughs> Don't we all want that? <laughs> so, but there's another big problem with 3D printing. 3D printing is not easy. Well, the current 3D printing process is not easy to use. And this is for a few reasons. 
After interviewing several, or actually dozens of teachers, we learned that the most common workflow for 3D printing goes like this. A student designs something on a computer, takes this model, and uploads it to a slicing program. Now, this slicing program generates the code that controls a 3D printer. So this is a very critical step in order to get successful prints that like match your key characteristics that you need. So optimizing the software involves changing hundreds of variables that are all dependent on each other and nonlinear. So this is incredibly difficult to do. But after a student has done this, they take that file, that code, and email it to their teacher. They're, and I have way too many emails as it is, and I'm sure teachers feel the same way. So after they get this load of files from all their, from all their students, they go through them one by one, print them out, and then have to manually remove the part from the 3D printer when it's done to start the next job. Now this is a very laborious process and can take a single teacher days or even weeks to finish printing parts for, uh, for one classroom worth of parts. So this is a problem. A lot of parts don't even get printed. So my team and I have invented the NV printer. Now the NV printer has hardware solutions and software solutions which make it easy to use and easy to share. First, to use our printer, a student simply logs onto our interface, selects from two settings. Now, these settings are quality and strength, and these are the two key characteristics that you want to manipulate for your printed parts. In the background, these sliders change many different variables, and, but we have ensured that they are correlated to those variables in a way through our expertise and testing that guarantee successful printing each and every time. This is huge. Then students simply submit the, submit the job for approval. A teacher logs on to the admin interface where they either skip the job for some reason, they can give the student feedback to create a collaborative environment, they can deny the part for whatever given reason, or approve it. Once the part is approved, it gets added to our automated queue. The automated queue is much like the one on your 2D paper printer in the office. You can submit as many pages to print as you want at a time, and the paper printer runs through one page at a time, but in succession. Our printer, our 3D printer, does it the same way. So here you see our automated removal mechanism. Now this is the core to our hardware. This blade allows you to remove a part and then automatically start the next part on the queue so you can print 24-7 without any human interaction. All the teacher needs to do is log on once to our interface, approve whatever jobs, and they will all be printed. So that part that you just saw get removed was a traffic light. This traffic light is designed to control traffic in Ethiopia. And the goal is to reduce the number of pedestrian deaths due to cars hitting them. This was designed by last year's invent team from Newton North High School. Um, this is exactly the kind of inventiveness and innovation we are trying to facilitate for our students. Now, I understand that we are all not this creative. So that's why we have allowed access to our library of educational models. Now, a teacher can simply go online to our educational content, print out tomorrow's lesson plan, and teach kids about projectile motion with a catapult, or DNA, biology, teach them about gear ratios using the gearbox, or bridge structures. Here is our product architecture in whole. Now, it seems like a very daunting task to address each part of these components. And the system cannot work, cannot work seamlessly without any part missing. Um, at first glance, it can be daunting, but with the right team and the effort, these things can get easier. Now, saying that they're not easy, but just easier. Um, we have partnered with First Robotics 
we are working with them to allow, to give FIRST Robotics teams access to 3D printing. Uh, Citizen Schools is a teaching after school program. And we have been there for the past two semesters teaching fifth and sixth, sixth graders how to design on a computer and print. Um, Autodesk, we're working with Autodesk to include their software with our printer package to every school that we supply a printer to. I would like to take this opportunity to thank our partners and our advisors, Sanjay Sarma, Vijay, and Michael Seema. Um, thank you to all of our family members, our friends. Uh, we couldn't have done it without you. And of course, thank you to Lemelson MIT. It's been an incredible support base. Um, and thank you all for being here. So after each of our collegiate winners concludes their presentations, we are going to allow about three minutes for Q&A. And so what we'd like you to do, if you have a question, uh, to pop up, raise your hand so we can see you, and ask your question. So I'm going to give you a minute to think. Oh, first one. If you could stand up for me, please. basically the entire duration of the print. So if you didn't hear the question, it was, uh, is there a safety hazard because of the lack of human interaction? Correct. So our printer is completely enclosed, and it has to pass uh, UL standards. So these standards include fire safety, chemical safety, and will ensure the safety of our printer under the operating conditions that we are proposing. Seems satisfied. Good answer. Yeah. <laughs> Another question. I saw a hand. Could you? Yeah. What's it like working with the people behind Autodesk, who are pretty much the biggest name in 3D printing right now? So the question was, what is it like working with the people behind Autodesk, because they're kind of the biggest name in 3D printing right now? Right? <laughs> they are. They are definitely a big name, and they have been an unbelievable support. They have provided us with lots of software which we use on a daily basis. And also, we, we also communicate with them to bounce ideas back and forth uh, about 3D printing. Uh, they have offered us plenty of support, and we have also given them our own feedback. It's been wonderful. Scanning this side. We're going to take the gentleman behind you. Oh, yeah, you know, you move first. That's all right. Stand up. Come on, do it. Your uh, printing process eliminate the use of a slice program. I'm sorry. Does your printing process eliminate the use of the slicing program? So we still use a slicer, but we do eliminate the need to download a slicing program. All of our software is in the cloud, so you simply need to log on to our interface from a tablet, a computer, or even your phone to submit a job. All the work's done in the cloud and then submitted to whatever printer you are registered to, as long as you have an internet connection. We had a question probably two or three rows behind him. Yeah, go ahead. What is the size of the uh, prints that can be done with this uh, printer? And, uh, how, much, how much printed material can be stored in the uh, area to store the done prints? Right, right. So, so the, the, the printer that you saw there was, a, was uh, an initial prototype. The prototype we're working on right now, which we're going to go into production this, this summer, has a build volume uh, by, of 8 by 8 by 10 inches, and it can store 2 kilograms of filament. So that's two spools. That's because we have a dual extruder, one for build material and one for support. Yeah? Again? Uh, off the, uh, printed, like, once you've already made a, um, a product using the uh, printer, yeah. you mentioned that the um, removal of the thing is automated, right? Yes. That's stored in the area. How much can that hold? So we have designed it so that it can hold about twice the printing volume. But uh, that being said, most parts are much smaller than the printing volume. So I would estimate around 20 to 30 parts. But if you do print a very large part, you might have to take it out pretty soon after. Seems like we've answered all the questions. Great. Can we get a round of applause again for Mateo Thank and Envy Box? Thank you.